chances first half, but second half um, it was mostly with Peterborough. Uh, yeah, we, we, I thought we should have been at least 2-0 up at half-time. I thought we played really well. Um, I thought our counter-press was excellent, caused them a lot of problems, um, torn the crowd. You know, frustration from them guys, but we just weren't, we weren't clinical. We should have had at least two goals. Um, and that was the difference today. Um, and then the two goals we conceded are, are down to absolutely appalling decision making. And um, that's, that's, the, that's it, that's the black and white of it. So um, the decision making in the second half was as frustrating as it was for not to score. And that's what separated the two sides today. Um, I thought for 45 minutes we looked like a really, really good team. Um, and for 45 minutes I thought, I thought we were going to win it. Um, as I said, decision making in the second game is like, it's just amateur. In a year and a half watching your teams, I've never seen like in the second half I saw players sort of like admonishing each other, waving their arms at each other. It was very unlike your teams to see your players doing that, but I certainly saw three or four examples of it. Yeah, so good, I'm glad you said that because it's it, not it saves me doing it, can't always come from it. I didn't actually see it to be honest, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to take your word for it. Um, and it's got to be down to the same things we're talking about. People making really poor decisions, and other people going, "Well, I'm, I don't, I'm really frustrated, and that's not good enough." So I'm glad you've said that. I didn't see that, but I'm really glad you've said that. Um, when you look at those chances in the first half, um, um, Andrei hitting the, the crossbar and and Sean heading over, it just changes the game if you can just take one of them, doesn't it? And I know Rico had a maybe he took a bit too long on a couple of chances as well. Yeah, look, Danny, Danny. Danny was unlucky, it was an incredible touch, it really showed his class there, incredible touch. Um, similar to maybe Fleetwood away last year with Danny, Sean's got to score from his. Um, and Rico's had a couple of really, really good moments that although they'll go down as good block shots, you, you've, got to, they've, you've got to get them off, you've got to take with, with a cleaner touch. Um, you, you, you may have had two goals, but um, it is what it is. Um, I'm pleased that Rico's in those positions and he's putting himself um, in those positions to score goals, as opposed to coming away from Peterborough, coming away and saying, well, we didn't really love the leg loving and we didn't really have a chance. I mean, we had 10 shots in the first half, they had five blocks, uh, five blocks they've hit the post. Um, Rico was, I, I want to say unlucky, but he's a bit cleaner with his touches. He might have had a couple of goals. So I thought we had really, really good moments in the game. It felt, in a way, like Peterborough maintained their level and second half Lincoln's level when is that fair? Um, yeah, 100%. What's really frustrating is it's not a case that our level's dropped, it's our decision making in the game changes the course of the game. And, um, and, and, and the whole sway of the game completely changes. Um, which I get, especially when you're playing against a team so, so good. Um, really fr so frustrating it's untrue. Not to the levels of last season but in these sorts of games you learn things though don't you about your team and about your players? Yeah I said to the guys after the game I'll t I, I can accept learning but I'm in the getting sacked business I don't have time to I'm not in an academy anymore um, so I'll take the hit as long as you learn but I'm not in the learning business I'm in the getting sacked business so um, and ultimately what will happen with individuals is We've got real talent in our group, but people who are looking at players from a higher level, they'll just say, no, decision making is not good enough. The best players make the best decisions in football, and the higher you go up, decisions are, are cleaner. And today, a decision making was particularly bad. Is that kind of one of the messages? Because obviously, one of the, the MOs of the, of the club is, is to develop players to move them on. And if these players want to develop and move on at some stage, as you've just said, they need to be better at making better decisions. Um, yeah, I, I look, I, be careful what I say. I, of the, the, the latter part, it comes. I think our players do make really, really good decisions, but today we made really poor ones. Um, so it's really, it's really, imp it's really important they learn, and, and we learn quick. Um, Mida Shadipo coming into the club last night. We spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, and you were like, "I'm not going to look at that sort of market." Clearly, you've had a reassessment as a, amongst the football side of things. Uh, no, not at all. The complete opposite. We've always been talking about it. We just don't want to talk in public about our business. Um, it was always bubbling in the background, so I've never, I would never lie to anybody. I never have, but it's not my job to come out and promise the sun, moon, and stars and deliver nothing. They're what ifs, and Mida's played a huge part in us being ab enabling him to come to us so he you know if he doesn't play the part that he's paid played 
uh, without getting into too much detail, then he wouldn't be here. So he needs a lot of credit for that as well. And as a, that sort of player to bring in, the advantage is that he's a player you know, he's a player that knows you. Obviously, he'll have to get up to the sort of the match fitness, but it's it's not like bringing in a stranger, is it? No, it was a big part of Mide coming in. When we looked at the list of the players we've had, um, it's a really... It's not an impressive list at all. Um, I'm not saying they're not good players, but you've got, when you look at the list, why they're on the list, you'll, without criticising anybody, you'll then realise wh wh where, where the negatives are in it. But Mide was one that stood out for us because he is a talented boy. I don't actually know how he's ended up in this position. He shouldn't be in this position. Uh, I've no idea why that happened. There's no way a player of his talent and ability should be in October without a club, um, but he was. Um, he's got real good talent, he knows us well. It won't take us six weeks to implement our DNA into him. And, uh, and we know coming in that the ability and the level that he's got, and he's a very, very good League One player. And just to say at this stage, it's, it's till January the deal, as I understand it. Uh, yes, I believe so. I, don't, I haven't particularly got involved in that, but no. I think it's public knowledge. Uh, yeah, and just, just any news on Jack Vale? Is he, is he getting closer? Because I know obviously he had that little setback. Um, Yes, but it, I tell you, if it helps, let's speak Monday, because then I, I have an idea in my head, but sometimes things change, and I'm, I say an idea, I know when he's back, um, but I'd like to get clarity on that, and nothing's changed, and we can chat about that on Monday. So just finally to recap, a frustrating afternoon for you? Beyond frustrating. I thought in the first half we've actually shown what a long way we've come compared to where we were last year. Um, a real, real long way. That was really, really impressive, but it was 45 minutes. Um, re really big school day today, for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you.